Remnant 2 has some pretty awesome and crazy weapons in it. We absolutely love the variety that there are in their game, not just from the crazy mod powers on some of them, but also just the weapons themselves and how they shoot or look. So we're going to round up some powerful and unique ones that you may not have seen. There are some really powerful weapons in the game that we've already covered on the channel before, such as the Enigma Arcing Lightning Pistol and the World's Edge Sword, so they won't make it into this list because we've already covered them, but they are very powerful. But let's start it off with the Krell Axe. This is basically Kratos' axe from the recent God of Wars. It's infused with Krell Shock magic and can be thrown if the wielder has stamina. The axe then magically reappears in your hand ready to throw again. So this is a melee weapon but also a ranged weapon, again similar to how it is in the God of War games for Kratos' axe. The effect on this axe says charge to throw the Krell axe which applies overloaded on hit, dealing 50 shock damage every 5 seconds for 10 seconds, shortly after throwing another will reappear in the wielder's hand. This definitely opens up some interesting opportunities for builds considering it's a melee weapon but can be used as an accurate ranged weapon. The description says, some consider the Krell to be comical in appearance, yet they wield great skill in combat. It's said they faced many enemies on their home world, even a towering cyclops and the destroyer himself. And next up is the Twisted Arbalist. This is a strange device that fires a bouncing energy disc that hits up to five enemies in close proximity, with the damage being slightly reduced on each bounce. You have to reload after every shot, but it doesn't take too long and the bounce is very generous. This is a really fun one to use and mess around with, and is great for AoE situations where it can really just bounce between enemies. What makes it special though is its mod power where it says, when the mod is full, the primary fire becomes empowered and highlights enemies it strikes. Active of the mod cools down a guardian sword on enemies struck by the empowered energy disc. The sword deals damage and three times stagger within five meters. So basically, once your mod is ready, you shoot enemies, it bounces between them and marks them, and then you pop this ability, which will cool down a giant sword to slam on top of them, dealing damage and high stagger. It's absolutely awesome to use. The description says, Few Pan have had the honor of witnessing many faces engage in battle. It is a glorious thing to watch. Enemy after enemy falling before it like wine glasses, teetering on a dilapidated dining table. And then we have Starshot. This is basically a mini laser pistol, and it sounds kind of like a Stormtrooper's blaster. It fires a fast-moving projectile that explodes on impact, and the explosion has no damage fall-off. This one's just fun to use, but its mod power is also very cool, especially for a sidearm. It says it funnels all current mod charges into the next shot, the projectile deals direct damage and explosive damage in a 5 meter radius per charge consumed, and does burning damage over 10 seconds per charge consumed, with the additional charges consumed increasing all damage by 5% each, up to a max of 5. So this small laser pistol can really pack a punch with a giant AoE, and it looks pretty nice when it goes off too. The description says, Shortly after Narud's christening, K. Jaru and I stood within the core observatory, watching the star at Narud's center glow and burn. He mused in jest, I thought, about creating smaller such stars, the kind one might hold in the palm of their hand. What kind of gods could we be, he wondered. I have since learned that Jaru never jests. This is probably also a nod to Dr. Octavius from Spider-Man, with his iconic line, the power of the sun at the palm of your hand. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. But next up is the Plasma Cutter. This one is really fun to use. It's basically an energy beam gun. It's described as an energy-based cutting tool that increases damage when focused on a target, and it can overheat. The special effect is fantastic because it helps the overheating issue, where it forces open the Plasma Cutter's heat vents to disperse all heat. While active, you generate 50% less heat, and your ramping cap is increased to times 3 damage. It overheats automatically when it deactivates, though, and it lasts 20 seconds. So if you can sustain this fire on a single enemy, such as a boss, this thing really ramps up and deals some tasty damage. The description says, with only two notable exceptions, the Custodian has always served the Drazir willingly, even helping us design the means of its own destruction. It was never naive in this, but a willing partner. And next up is probably one of my favourites, it's the Meridian, which is a sidearm, and it's a literal grenade launcher with a magazine. It fires volatile grenades that explode on direct impact with enemies and deals AoE damage within 4 meters, and if you miss enemies, they will eventually explode but can also be shot to detonate early. Its modification is Screamer, where you build up charges that can then be used to to fire off rockets that also explode within a two and a half meter radius. So this is effectively a grenade launcher, but also a rocket launcher all within your sidearm. The Dran don't have the refined training of the creatures what consume our world, but they're clever. 
figuring out ways to throw the enemy's slings and arrows back at them, and then some. So if you want a sidearm that packs a punch, the Meridian is the way to go. But next up, another sidearm, the Nebula. This thing is a mini acid flamethrower style weapon, which is awesome and has a really cool mod as well. This thing fires a stream of super hot acid gas, which applies the corroded effect to enemies, dealing damage over 15 seconds, and any enemies that die while corroded will spawn a gas cloud that applies an on-hit effect, and lasts 2 seconds, which can also be refreshed. The special effect on this one is Nano Swarm, where you unleash a swarm of nano machines that seek after enemies within 20 meters and repeatedly attack them, dealing acid damage per hit for 15 seconds. Considering again this is a sidearm, it's essentially a acid flamethrower and has a nano swarm ability, it's a very cool one to have. The description says, It seems counterintuitive, but the science of microscopically small constructions is what enables the creation of vast, even galaxy spanning mechanisms. The ability to control individual molecules enables astronomical stability. And then next is the Pulse Rifle. This one doesn't have any unique modification slot on it, but is still a very good and sought after weapon within the game. Not having a modification slot locked in can sometimes be a really good thing because you have more flexibility on it, and some of the mods you can slot in are absolutely awesome. This Pulse Rifle is an extremely accurate high-tech Pulse Rifle which shoots a quick three-round burst. The description says, K. Jaru, the head of House Myrtle, held annual seminars espousing the advantages of new weaponry innovations and identifying gaps in their current arsenal. These seminars might have been sensible had we encountered even one enemy in all of our travels. So this is definitely one to look out for if you prefer to have your own switchable modification slot, because it's pretty good and reliable. But what crazy or awesome weapons are you using? that you don't see people talking about. Tell us in the comments down below so we can all learn together. And the two videos on screen now, we think you'll really enjoy if you did enjoy this one. You don't have to watch them if you don't want to, but if you did like this video, you're probably going to like these ones too. And then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.